If you're looking for the best AM5 motherboard for Ryzen 7000, you've come to the right place. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now Ryzen 7000 CPUs are here. So today, we're taking a look at the best AM5 motherboard for Ryzen 7000, including the best X670 motherboard and best B650 motherboard. We'll go through everything that you need to know to pick the best motherboard for gaming or productivity builds. And we'll give you our specific product recommendations for every budget level. Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like as it makes makes huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Now we currently have four Ryzen 7000 CPUs, including the six core Ryzen 7600X, the eight core Ryzen 7700X, the 12 core Ryzen 7900X, and 16 core Ryzen 7950X. Now we've previously covered all of their specs in another video. So if you need a refresher, check out our Ryzen 7000 launch info video or our Ryzen 7900X build video linked down in the video description. We do expect Vcash versions of at least some of these CPUs to launch around the first quarter of 2023, but that shouldn't really impact your motherboard choice. AMD says it will support socket AM5 through 2025 plus. What does that mean? It means that it's good for the current generation of chips and an upgrade generation in 2024, but its future beyond that is gonna be up to AMD. Now we don't necessarily expect it to be two and done the way Intel does on its motherboards, but just know it is a possibility. Let's quickly dive into the differences between the best X670 motherboard and the best B650 motherboard, because honestly, they are quite murky at best. In fact, with the E or extreme version of each of these, there's technically four AM5 motherboard chipsets. The good news is that all four of those chipset motherboards will allow full use of overclocking and DDR5 with AMD's new auto memory overclocking profile called Expo. Now, the only significant difference boils down to how much PCIe Gen 5 support the motherboard offers. The first level of support is simply using PCIe Gen 5 speed lanes internally on the motherboard itself. And what this does is allow the motherboard to double the number of connections it offers, but not to use devices specifically designed to run at PCIe Gen 5 speeds. The second level of support is enabling PCIe Gen 5 devices at either the main GPU slot or one or more M.2 NVMe SSD slots but not at both at the same time. And the third level of support is to allow both PCIe Gen 5 devices at the main GPU slot and one or more M.2 NVMe SSD slots simultaneously. X670E allows the full level of support as do some B650E motherboards. While X670 and most B650E motherboards enable PCIe Gen 5 devices at either the GPU or M.2 slot, but again, not both at the same time. And of course, some B650 motherboards support one or more PCIe Gen 5 SSDs, and others just have PCIe Gen 4 devices. But here's why none of that matters. Nobody needs PCIe Gen 5 devices and that's unlikely to change for many, many years to come. PCIe Gen 5 graphics cards, they don't even exist yet. In fact, Nvidia's RTX 4000 series only uses PCIe Gen 4. And for all except the most niche use case, the PCIe Gen 5 SSDs that are launching this fall, they're gonna be a total waste of money, especially for gamers, as there's still no performance difference between SATA, PCIe Gen 3, or PCIe Gen 4 SSDs in gaming, let alone PCIe Gen 5. So the TLDR is that it's highly unlikely that PCIe Gen 5 devices will be a thing while these motherboards are still relevant. So in essence, every user should ignore whether the board is X670 or B650, and instead just focus on getting the features that you want at the best price. So what motherboard features should you be looking for? Well, let's start off with the VRMs, which is the power delivery to the CPU that's located in an L shape around the CPU at the top and far left part of the motherboard. Unlike past generations of Ryzen motherboards, these VRMs, they look incredibly overbuilt for even heavy overclocking on the Ryzen 7950X. While there are a handful of exceptions to this with a couple of low quality B650 motherboards, all the boards that we recommend should be fully capable of running any CPU, including overclocking. One new AM5 motherboard feature that users might be interested in is USB 4. Now in a nutshell, USB 4, it's just an advancement on USB type C, which offers transfer speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second as well as allowing power delivery. The advancement here is that USB 4 will support multiple devices over the same connector 
much better than USB Type-C. But this feature, it's mostly of interest to laptop and mobile users where connections are limited and there's not a clear benefit to DIY PC builders where we already have tons of connections. Except for possibly users who have invested heavily in a Thunderbolt 4 environment, ASUS is currently offering the most support for USB 4, although on most of their boards, this is just a header and you'll still have to buy the add-in card for it. If you want USB 4 ports, you're gonna have to spend quite a bit more money and get one of the higher end motherboards. Let's talk about cooler compatibility because AMD initial guidance that AM4 coolers would be AM5 motherboard compatible, it was a little misleading. While most, but not all, AM4 coolers that utilize the standoff holes on the stock AM5 backplate will work. Those AM4 coolers that require you to replace the motherboard backplate with their own custom backplate will not work. And that's because Ryzen 7000 utilizes an LGA socket with the pins on the motherboard, not the CPU as was previously the case. And the CPU retention mechanism is directly mounted onto the AM5 backplate, meaning you can't just swap it out for an AM4 style one. Additionally, the CPU height on the AM5 motherboard and AM4 motherboards are slightly different, so several cooler companies have announced new mounting hardware for AM5 to fix this. We'll have more on coolers in our upcoming Best Cooler for Ryzen 7000 video. Let's talk about motherboard audio. The audio section of the motherboard, it's located in the bottom left-hand corner of the board, and it's made up of capacitors and a Realtek audio codec chip. Now you use this audio anytime you plug in an analog device with a connector that looks like this, either into the rear panel audio connector connectors or the ones on the front panel of your PC case. If instead you're plugging in a sound device with a digital connection like HDMI or USB, then you're bypassing the onboard motherboard audio processing and instead using the secondary device for digital to analog conversion. Now budget audio codecs can sound fine and they're typically in the 800 series, such as the ALC897. More premium audio codecs have better overall signal to noise ratios and additional audio signal boost for front panel headphones like the ALC1200. The best audio codec for AM5 motherboards is ALC1220 or the new but similar ALC4080, both of which offer additional encoding and decoding support as well as support for high impedance headphones when using the front panel PC audio plugs. I'll leave a link in the video description to an Igor's Lab article on motherboard audio if you want a deeper dive. Quick word on pricing before we jump into the motherboards. Yes, I know at launch, it's really kind of brutal right now. I'm filming this on launch day. The pricing is, feels like quite a bit over the top. I'm hopeful that in time that this pricing will slide. So we'll go through these by feature set as much as by price. So let's jump into the best entry level AM5 motherboard. We're gonna start off with the ASRock B650 MPG Riptide, currently the cheapest AM5 motherboard. And honestly, for the feature set in terms of actually being the cheapest, not bad. When we say entry level, what we're talking about is entry level audio codec, like this is the ALC897. These are not upgraded audio. Gonna be slightly cut down on the rear USB connectivity, fewer M.2, those kinds of features. That being said, if we look at this board, what do I like about this board? Well, I gotta tell you, I really like the overall main VR heatsink, but I don't like the fact that we don't have one up here at the top of the VRM. Again, we have a cut down ALC 897 audio section, but I will say for it being one of the cheapest AM5 motherboards that it actually has quite a bit of rear panel USB connectivity, two and a half gigabit real, real tech LAN. It's got BIOS flashback on it, got a pre-installed IO shield, which is really nice. I like that. It doesn't look like those cheap metal ones you put in and every time you look at the back of it, you think, oh, I really cheaped out on this motherboard. So overall, not a bad motherboard for it being the entry level. That being said, you know, hopefully as these prices come down, this one will come down quite a bit. Another board I would take a look at, again, check the links down in the description to see what the current pricing on this one is, the ASRock B650 PG Lightning. Very similar to the previous board. This actually has a slightly better VRM. Again, the VRMs on these boards are absolutely nuts. You could put a 7950X on them, overclock it. You really shouldn't worry. It's a 17 phase VRM, which is absolutely insane. The thing I really like about this is I believe we've got a lot more USB rear connectivity on this. Look at that. Look at all those high speed ports. Those are the blue, the yellow ones. The black ones are obviously the USB 2.0 ports. And then we've got the USB type C. So tons of rear USB connectivity. The board overall looks absolutely fine. You know, it's very black on black front panel USB type C header for your USB connections in the front of your case. Again, entry level audio is one of its downsides, but if it continues to be one of the cheaper AM5 motherboards, this is one I would take a look at for entry level. 
Couple of alternatives to look at, MSI Pro B650M A Wi Fi. Really no differences between this and some of the, uh, the ASRock boards we just took a look at, other than it does have a VRM heatsink on the top of the micro ATX motherboard. Otherwise, the connectivity, roughly the same, doesn't come with the pre installed IO shield. Uh, I don't know why you, they could have thrown that in. That being said, it does have quite a few high speed ports, no USB 2.0 ports, but quite a number of high speed ports on the back. Comes with Wi Fi. There is an ATX full size version of this motherboard for about $20 or $30 more as well. And then two quick other kind of also RAM boards you want to probably check the price on the ASRock Pro B650 Pro RS. Not a huge fan of this board for the one reason that is the rear panel USB connectivity here. You can see how many USB 2.0, it has six USB 2.0s. Who needs all that USB 2.0? And then we only got four on the higher speed connections. We do have a Type C. Now, maybe you're somebody who just that even this is way overkill. A lot of gamers, this would be way overkill. So maybe this one's absolutely fine for you. I do like the styling on this board a lot better. Otherwise, very similar in terms of feature set. Another also ran is the Gigabyte B650 Aorus Elite AX, currently $230. It's hard to swallow for this price point right now, particularly given that it only has entry level audio on it. That's unfortunate for an Aorus branded board. Remember, that's their gaming branding. So to me, if you're gonna brand something as a gaming motherboard, it better have some kind of upgraded audio on it. And it's unfortunate because the B550 motherboard certainly did. However, I think what Gigabyte has traded out here is you get more PCIe 5.0 M.2 connectivity. Now to me, that's just a feature no one's gonna use. I will say the one thing that Gigabyte always does well, really, is the rear panel USB connectivity. A lot of high speed ports, a lot of USB 2.0 ports on there as well for your mice, your keyboards, things like that. So there's tons and tons of connectivity. So not a bad entry level motherboard as long as this price gets down. Let's jump into the mid range boards that should cover most folks and let's look at the best price to performance for creator and gaming workloads specifically. So we're looking for that upgraded audio to at least an ALC 1220 or ALC 4080. They're exactly the same performance. ALC 1200 is okay ish, but Look, at this price point, I really do expect the best right now. And the first board that I'm drawn to, MSI Mag B650M Mortar Wi-Fi. Why? Because it happens to be the cheapest one in its class right now. Yes, it's a micro ATX motherboard. We'll go through some ATX motherboards in just a second. But what do I like about this board? It's got really nice black styling to it. The board looks great. ALC 1220 audio codec, fantastic. Got really good USB connectivity in the rear panel, including a lot of high speed you, it's all high speed actually, USB connectivity. Has all five of the audio outputs, really like that. Pre-installed IO shield, and it's got a BIOS flashback button. Quite honestly, if you're looking to just get the best price to performance, this is one of the boards I would immediately check the pricing on. If you're looking for an ATX size motherboard with kind of all the great features on it, it's really kind of a log jam here, and there is not honestly much separating these boards in terms of features. So maybe just pick the, your favorite vendor. If you like Gigabyte, great. If you like MSI, great. If you like Asus, we've got boards for you. And honestly, they're all within right now, 30 to $50 of each other. So they're kind of all in the same price class. Maybe ultimately as they start coming down in price, you just pick the cheapest one. Let's start off with the Gigabyte B650 Aorus Pro AX. Great board. It's got ALC 1220 audio codec, a nice little audio section down here. Four M.2s on this one. I think that's going to be attractive, especially to creators who want a lot of storage. And then we've got, you know, typical Gigabyte good USB connectivity in the rear panel, high speed, as well as those USB 2.0 devices, your mics, your keyboards. I do like there's one feature that this board comes with that the similar boards in its class don't come with, and that's the power button up here on the board itself. Just nicer. You don't absolutely need it. You can always use a screwdriver if you want to kind of bench test the board before you build the whole system. I do just like having the, the one button push, just a nice little touch to it. And of course, I should mention the Gigabyte B650 Aero G. Honestly, it's the exact same motherboard. It's just white. I don't quite understand what's going on here. I've checked rear USB, I've checked everything. I cannot really find the differences between the two other than one is white and one is not white. If I were a Gigabyte, I would have included maybe Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 here instead of the same exact board layout. But honestly, if you're looking for a white version of the Gigabyte board, there it is. Then we've got MSI's entry into this category and they're great board. The only difference I will say is it has one less M.2 NVMe SSD slot on it. I don't think that'll be a big deal for most folks. It still has three of them on there. 
ALC1220 audio codec on it, Wi-Fi, it's got uh, tons of rear panel USB connectivity. Again, all five of the audio outs, which I do really like. It's got the pre-installed IO panel and it looks really nice. So if you want MSI instead, this is your board. And of course, just like with the Gigabyte board the, and the Aero, we have the white version of the Tomahawk, which is the B650 Edge Wi-Fi. Honestly, it seems to be the exact same board, except it comes with all this kind of cool styling on it. So if this is more you're liking and you don't mind spending another, you know, 15, 20 bucks on it, here you go. Then we've got ASUS's entries. I've skipped over the Tough Gaming. They come with a weaker audio codec and the S1200 is the same as the ALC1200, just a branded version. And also just not the greatest on the feature set for not a lot less money. I would instead look at the ROG Strix B650-A gaming Wi-Fi. I know some folks out there will only buy ASUS and if that's you, this is probably the board for you. The F version, which is almost identical, is basically just about $20 more. The white version looks really nice. Got a great looking audio section down here. I will say the one thing that I don't quite understand is the rear panel connectivity. Not the greatest. It looks like what they've done is they've opted for an additional USB type C on here that's a 20 gigabit per second one in lieu of other high speed type A ports. That's perfectly fine. You can also always just get a, a dongle to extend those out. Not that big a deal. I think, especially if you're just gaming, this is probably plenty of ports for you. But yeah, for $279, would have expected maybe a little bit more, but obviously, if you're looking for the ASUS Strix boards, this is the first one I would look at. And similarly, just like there's a more expensive, different colored version of the other boards, there's of course the Strix B650E-F gaming Wi-Fi. Now the difference on this is you do get some of the B650E, more PCIe 5.0. Again, as we pointed out previously, honestly just does not matter. Still has three M.2s as did the B650-A. You know, if you want four or more, you gotta look at Gigabyte or you gotta go up uh, another level. Now, I will say on this one, a little bit more rear panel connectivity, which I do like. We get a couple of extra ports on there. But overall, it's for about $20 more. It's roughly the same board, just a different skin. And then, of course, ASRock has a board in this category, but it's an X670E, and that might sway some folks one way or the other. It comes with ALC 12. 20 audio codec on it, uh, only four capacitors on it, but that doesn't always tell the full story. It does come with four M.2s. Again, additional expanded connectivity on this board, quite a bit of rear panel USB connectivity, including a lot of high speed USB connectivity, USB type C. Overall, pretty good board. This is the board that we recommended that people should buy in the mid range in our X670 motherboard video. Obviously, B650 hadn't come out yet. That being said, right now, $285 does compete with those B650 motherboards. Boards. The reason we're not looking at B650 motherboards for a lot of the other ASRock ones is honestly, they all have entry level audio codecs. So this is the board that I would look at. So then the question becomes, once you've got that level of connectivity and features, what more do you possibly want? Well, if you're willing to spend maybe about another $100, you can get some additional quality of life features if you're kind of in a niche like overclocking, for instance. I would take a look at the Gigabyte AORUS B650E AORUS Master and that it has a postcode in the top right hand corner. So as your overclock also has a nice power button, which I do really like. We built our build in using the X670E Master, which is very, very similar to this board. Really great board overall. A lot of good rear panel connectivity. It's got the BIOS flashback. Gigabyte calls it Q flash plus just to make it more complicated. Then we've got the clear CMOS button. Overall, really, really good motherboard. If you feel like you need this feature set, much stronger VRM. In fact, total overkill VRMs on this board. So if you really wanna do some high-end overclocking, this might be the board for you. One feature is aesthetics, and you'll be happy to know, especially those of you who love white or black or color theme builds in particular, that NZXT is producing the N7 B650E. That it comes in both white uh, and black, and mostly it's the same exact motherboard. It's just the color of the metal on top is a little bit different. Looking at the feature set, not quite as impressive as some of the other motherboards that are 350 $50. It is a lot of money to spend for this feature set. You're seeing this feature set primarily more like $270. That being said, what you're buying here, obviously, and you're typically with NZXT, is you're buying a very clean looking, amazing aesthetic. So if, if color choice in the build is really important to you, I do always recommend these boards. They always turn out to be really, really good boards. Really strong VRM on this board. It's got three M.2s, really strong looking audio section, 
ALC1220 audio codec on it. Overall, if you're looking for all white, all black, or some kind of white black mix, these are great boards. Let's look at the best ITX motherboard for Ryzen 7000. And honestly, you basically have three choices. Gigabyte, for whatever reason, at least has not announced or released an ITX board in the B650 range. I would ignore all the XX70 boards. They're just way too much money for not enough feature set. So you basically have three options. You've got the MSI B650i Edge Wi-Fi. You've got the ASRock B650e ITX board. And then you've got the as yet unreleased B650e-i gaming Wi-Fi. Now, all of these boards are great. They all have high-end audio codecs on them. They all take a couple of M.2s on them. Most of them have PCIe Gen 5 if you absolutely need that. Primary differences are probably gonna come down to price. Typically, the Strix boards cost more, but we'll have to see, and you'll have to check in your region. The board right now that is coming in kind of maybe in the sweet spot appears to be the ASRock board. A lot of rear panel connectivity on it, which is really nice. Now, it is a little bit more, quite a bit more actually than the MSI board. So maybe if price is more of a controlling feature for you, go with the MSI board instead. And if you're one of those folks who absolutely has to have to have an ASUS board, I would just wait for that one to come out. Let me know down in the comments what motherboard features that you often look for when you're buying one. And remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Don't forget to go check out those links to all the motherboards down in the video description. Check out what pricing and availability is like in your region. And we'll catch you on the next one.